All right, so in this module, we're gonna uh, look at how we determine the mechanical properties of ceramics uh, because they're inherently different than metals. All right, so just like you saw in the last module, which was the demo, a demonstration, you know, involving food, but uh, thinking about ceramics, we saw that in fact, it was difficult to prepare a tensile specimen for testing, um, you know, in terms of, in this case, it's talking about machining, you know, trying to machine a material like that to a tensile uh, shape, the dog bone. Uh, but we also saw that it was difficult to grip, right? It, that caused fracture, and that's not what we're trying to do, is we're not trying to cause fracture at the grip. And the other thing is, we also saw this as well, is that there's not a lot of plastic deformation or a lot of strain, so they tend to fail with very little actual movement. And so it's very hard to, to um, predict, and it also means that any sort of um, misalignment, if it's uh, at a slight angle, this can cause uh, bending moments instead of pure tensile, tes tensile stress. And so, like I said, bending, bending testing is, is typically what's done, and you see an example of bend testing here. And, and that's what you saw in the demo, is that bend testing was a lot more effective at breaking these samples. So that's what we do. Uh, we typically call it flexural testing, um, and we have two main configurations. What we call three-point, so we have a point here, uh, support of the sample, another support, our sample, and then one more right in the middle on top. And so the force comes from this point, this point, and this point. And so this means that the maximum stress is right in the middle where it's deflecting the most. We can also have four point bend. So as you can guess, this is called three point because of the three points. Here we've added an extra one on the top, right? And this is kind of, this is similar to what I had um, when I was doing the, the, the veggie or apple straw um, with my hands is I basically had four points on the sample and I was trying to bend it in the same way. And so in this case, because we have two points, the maximum uh, stress is actually spanned over the two points here. So we get a maximum stress over a longer or wider range of the material and that has some important implications. And so here's our kind of force points um, in this diagram. All right, so let's kind of look at this and, and see what we get out of it. So if we have a, we can have either a rectangular or a circular cross section. So here they are here. So rectangular, or sorry, circular would have a radius R and then a rectangular would have a, a width and a depth to it. So that gives us our cross sectional area. Um, again, they these materials tend to be only elastic, uh, not much plastic deformation and very uh, brittle fracture, right? Uh, as we saw in that example. So three-point bend is often used, and again, the, the force point is halfway along the length, and then we have a deflection at the midpoint. So this deflection um, can be measured along with the force applied, and we get a similar load displacement curve, just like we did in uniaxial tensile testing. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we got our geometry, we got the deflection you can see here as it deflects from its original position and the force applied to, to make that deflection happen. And so we see that if we have a force deflection curve, it looks, it's basically a load displacement from tensile testing. We have a linear elastic portion with a slope which is related to the elastic modulus and that elastic modulus is over here. So instead of just the this is force displacement, so we have to have the slope, which is here in red, but we also have a factor of the dimension, so length and um, width and depth for the cross section, uh, rectangular cross section, and the radius and length for the circular cross section. So we can get an elastic modulus from this type, or we can get a modulus, I should say, um, an elastic modulus from this type, but it's not going to be exactly the same as the tensile testing because we're uh, applying a different stress state, right? It's bending, it's what we call flexure. 
So we can, but we can get uh, a measure of the elastic modulus in this bend state. We can also get a strength, and we call this the flexural strength. And this is going to be our stress at fracture during the bend testing. So let's take a look at that. So this flexural strength, so again, the using, still using sigma, and then fs is for flexural strength, and it's the fracture force, and then uh, the length and dimensions, uh, either uh, rectangular cross-section or circular cross-section. And this is, again, how much stress can it take under this flexural state before it fractures, right? That's what we're measuring. And so you kind of have an idea here of these materials. So something like glass has a relatively low flexural strength, 69 megapascals, whereas something uh, like silicon nitride can actually have something up to 1,000 megapascals. But again, you see a wide range here, and that's important to keep in mind. Same thing, elastic modulus, we can measure that, about 69 gigapascals up to three or 400 gigapascals for these ceramics. These, uh, as opposed to the glass. All right, so an int, uh, another important part I want to mention here while we're on this uh, idea of strength and the stress state. So again, this is bending. And what happens during bending, if you can kind of imagine this sample, is that as you're deflecting it down, the atoms on the top, because this area and this area are getting closer, right? It's trying to bend over on itself. And so the atoms here are actually under compression on the top. Whereas you can see here that the area on the bottom is actually kind of trying to open up because of the way that it bends. And so these atoms are actually trying to get further and further apart, and that's under tension. So the area of max tension is right at the bottom of the sample underneath that force point and four point bend, or sorry, and three point bend. So this is where uh, it's going to fracture. It's going to initiate fracture in this location of max tension, um, as we see here, because um, the, the tension, uh, essentially for ceramics, um, they tend to fail under tension, not compression. And we'll talk about this uh, in a little bit. But that's just something to keep in mind is the stress state. It's not tension. It's not just compression. It's actually a mixture um, of those two when we're talking about bend uh, stress.